Ziff connectors exist in a lot of Apple products, and they're quite finicky to replace. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through my step-by-step -step on how I go about doing that. So let's get started. ZIF stands for Zero Insertion Force. These connectors you'll see a lot inside of iPads, Apple Watches, MacBooks, and they're quite difficult to replace due to their makeup. They're composed of basically three materials, metal pins, and two different types of plastic. The plastic flap melts fairly easily, while the other plastic doesn't, but can under the right temperature. So replacing them is quite difficult. Some of the tools that you will need to replace them is a hot air rework station, a soldering iron, preferably a microscope or some type of magnification. Captain tape might be required for surrounding components. Flux is a must, solder wick, and of course, the connector that you're replacing it with, and some isopropyl alcohol and a brush or some way to clean it. In today's example, I'm gonna be taking a look at a ZIF connector that's on the back of an Apple Watch screen. This connector is on an Apple Watch Series 8, and it's needing to be replaced because of water damage. All right, as you can see, we've got a damaged connector here. This is an Apple Watch Series 8. It saw some water damage, and there's a pin that's completely corroded. Tried to work on it, see if I can touch up the, the, the pad, but there's no luck there. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is salvage this flap. They tend to break, and so it's always nice to have some on hand just in case I need to use it in the future. I'm gonna gently push out the arms so I can push out the connector. In order to not damage the display, we need to remove this PCB from the back of it. So I'm gonna add some isopropyl alcohol around the perimeter. This will help as I go to remove it from the back of the display. I'm gonna take a thin piece of plastic and gently wedge it under and cut through the double-sided adhesive that holds it to the back of the display. The gentle sawing motion, it's quite simple to separate it. Slowly slice under, taking my time, and I'll gently make my way down to the bottom on both sides. That way, this little PCB can fold up and be isolated from the back of the display. And then it'll gently lift away from the back of the display, just like that. All right, I'm gonna isolate the back of the display with a spacer here, and I'm gonna add some flux to the top of the connector, and I'm gonna come in with my soldering iron and we will flood the pins with solder. And we'll also do the same on the pins, making sure we mix this low melt solder with the factory solder. This will make it so much easier to remove here in a second. Got my soldering iron at 320 degrees Celsius, and we'll bump it up to 400 degrees. This way I'll be able to quickly melt through the plastic, moving the pins around, completely splitting them from the board, pushing the grounder pins out of the way on both sides, and sliding the whole melted mess away. And now pick that up with a pair of tweezers, and now I'm gonna add some flux just to see what we really are dealing with with that corroded pad. Take my iron down in, and I can see that I've got about a third of it left. Not enough to solder to, but we can use it to help anchor a replacement pad. All right, so I can tell that this pad comes off to this larger trace. So I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm gonna carefully scrape off the black top coat to reveal a part of the trace that I can tie into. We'll add some flux, take our soldering iron and we'll tin up that little trace that we've exposed. And I get out a trace repair kit and it looks like I'm out of the rectangular ones, but I do have these circle ones. I just need to find the right size that I wanna work with so that I can alter it to work for me. And this one looks good right here. All right, so we'll grab this one. In order to make it more of a rectangle, I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm gonna carefully cut off the sides. That way I'm left with something that more resembles a pad. All right, we'll line it on up. And with the iron, we're going to Get it to solder to the old pad that's partially there and our new exposed trace. We got this little tail that we need to get rid of. So I'll go ahead and take the razor blade and we'll cut off the excess. We'll clean up the flux. And with the area cleaned, I'm gonna put a drop of the UV solder mask on top of the area that we're working on. 
And then one of my favorite tricks is to take a piece of clear plastic and push it down over the UV solder mask. And while holding it nice and flush, I'll hit it with a UV light so that it can start to cure. And it cures pretty much within a few seconds when it's this thin. We'll peel away the plastic. Now I'm going to take the razor blade and we're going to expose the pad. And we'll do that everywhere that I got some UV mask that I don't want. And then we'll clean up the area. All right, we'll add some flux. And we'll go in and add some solder to each one of the pads. Doing this by eye, see if I can get a, a, the right amount on each one of the pads and on the grounder pads as well. I want them to be as uniform as possible. All right, we're going to be salvaging a connector from a defective screen. I need to carefully remove and separate this one as well. So I'll go ahead and quickly perform the same procedures so that I can salvage a connector because this one isn't available for purchase. All right, so I'm going to come in from below the PCB with a hot rubric station and we're going to heat it up and melt the solder. This way I'm not melting any of the plastics. They will both melt. The plastic flap melts a lot faster than the other, but heating it indirectly will allow us to remove it. All right, it cut out there for a minute, but I was able to remove it successfully. As soon as it was liquid, I was able to slide it out and out of the way. And we're going to install it on the display. That should be good so that we can test it. So I'll line it up, take some time to make it perfect. Got my hot air set at 375. My airflow is about 50%. And we'll heat it from below and watch the solder melt. And then we just need to make sure that the pins and everything are all soldered down. And there you can start to see all the solder suck up to the to the pins. Just gonna nudge it, make sure we can kind of agitate it into place, making sure it's in line with the other connector. And that looks good. All right, that looks good, except some of those pins don't look like they're fully connected on just the bottom side. The top side looks good. So I may need to go in and touch up with the iron some of the, the pins down at the bottom. To do that, I'm going to add a little bit of flux and I'll come in with my soldering iron and we're going to help that solder travel to the pin. I'll just go on each one, give it a little tap. That should make sure it's secured. Now this one doesn't seem like it's wanting to accept some, so I'm going to have to add an extra. The rest look like they're nice and secured. And of course, I need to be extra careful with this one on the end. All right, we'll clean up the area with some isopropyl alcohol and a brush and we'll dry it all up with a Q-tip. I want to check the underside to make sure I didn't burn the coil and it looks really good. I don't see anything wrong with it whatsoever. Now we can just push it back down into place. It's kind of hard to see, but all of the pins there are making solid contact with the pads. The solder's jumping down each one and on the top as well. Nice and solid legs on all the pins. Now the actual connector itself is damaged as well. I could make a completely separate video on how to replace it, as well as replacing the power button and crown, as they are both quite difficult to replace, but with the right tools inserted into the right areas, replacing the crown isn't crazy difficult, as well as the power button. All right, now it's time to slide in the flex cable. Now that we've got our new ones, installed and after pushing them in and clicking down the latches making sure to reconnect the battery and put back the battery bracket and the little micro screw then push the power button and look for that apple logo and although it's hard to pick up on the camera you can see it right there and that connector is all good and that's how to replace a zip connector now, obviously, the technique is going to be slightly different depending on what you're working on. But from in my experience, indirect heat is the better option unless you are able to remove the flap and swap it over. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.